all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. Welcome to Veterans Radio. I am Jim Fossone. I'm the officer of the deck today. We've got some great programs for you. I think you'll find very interesting. We always want to remind you, you can find more about Veterans Radio at its Facebook site or by going to veteransradio.net where we're on the web 24-7. You can find a lot of our podcasts there as well. We post new ones every Tuesday, so you can get a new story, a new interview, something you didn't know before by going to veteransradio.net. And before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. First up, we want to thank National Veteran Business Development Council, nvbdc.org. It was established to certify both service-disabled and veteran-owned businesses. You'll find out how they can help your business by going to nvbdc.org. We also want to thank Eisenhower Center. It's a brain injury recovery center. Learn more about eisenhowercenter.com. They're located in Michigan and in Florida. We want to thank Legal Help for Veterans. Legal Help for Veterans fights for veterans' disability rights all across the nation. You can reach them at 800-693-4800 or on the web at legalhelpforveterans.com. Contact us if you'd like to be a sponsor on Veterans Radio, and let's move on to our program. We want to welcome to Veterans Radio Colonel Thomas J. Gordon, United States Marine Corps, retired. Uh, Tom, welcome to Veterans Radio. Hey, thanks, Jim. This is an honor and pleasure to be here. Well, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about your military career, a a book uh, that you've written on Marine Maxims, Turning Leadership Principles into Practice, and a little bit about what you're currently doing at the Citadel. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. But how did a nice boy like you from Boston, Massachusetts, end up in the Marine Corps? <laughs> end up in the Marine Corps or end up at the Citadel? Well, let's start with oh. the Citadel because that is where you, okay. you started right, this journey. Right. So, um, you know, I, I tried to get into the Naval Academy. I, I wasn't smart enough, um, but I really wanted to be a Marine. And uh, I did not come from a military family, but my stepfather was a Boston cop and he was a former Marine. And uh, I was acquainted with some former Marines in the area, all cops, and uh, they had worked for some Citadel graduates and, and they recommended I check the place out. So I looked at VMI and I looked at the Citadel and um, threw, threw my name in and it, it all worked out. No, no regrets whatsoever. But I, I went to the Citadel for the sole purpose of, of being a Marine. I, I was at least blessed with, at uh, age 17, I knew what I wanted to do. Well, it does make a big difference. And it uh, also kind of shows the power of connections and networking where, you know, friends of your father, stepfather sort of said, hey, check out the Citadel. Otherwise, you would have never probably heard of it. I, I had not. I had not. So and a lot of folks ask me about, um, you know, why didn't you go to Norwich, you know, being from Boston? And I always ask, answer the same way. I'm like, hey, have you all seen Charleston? <laughs> True <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my wife and my favorite city in the world, and we've lived all over the world. So um, I served in the Marine Corps for 30 years. Um, as you know, after 30 years, they take you out back and they shoot you. And, um, <laughs> you know, that, that happened in June. And I, and I woke up in Valhalla and it looks an awful lot like Charleston, South Carolina in the Citadel campus. Well, we're going to talk about that a little later because you are the commandant of cadets at Citadel now. Just, uh, you know, a brand new transition for you. And it's going to be great to learn a little bit about uh, more about Citadel and in Charleston, South Carolina and, and sort of what uh, the commandant of com- uh, cadets is responsible for but let me back up sure you spent 30 years in the marine corps uh, a lot of it in tank battalion with service uh, in all the major hot spots over the last 30 years i'd like to turn if i can to uh your initial time at the citadel but maybe more importantly what the citadel's about today 30 years uh, uh, later um, I don't know on Veterans Radio that we've had a chance to talk to a graduate, and we certainly haven't had the chance to talk to somebody who is the uh, Commandant of Cadets at the Citadel here in 2021. So, uh, 
uh, Colonel Gordon, can you kind of give us a little bit about what's going on down there in uh, South Carolina? Well, hey, thanks, Jim. So the Citadel's mission is to is to develop, educate, and develop principal leaders um, so that will be successful in all walks of life. Um, of course, I'm biased, but I truly believe that the Citadel is the ultimate leadership lab. So um, you talked about, well, hey, are leaders made or are leaders born? Well, I, I think we all can agree that while there are a few naturals out there, most of us have developed, you know, our leadership skills through the school of hard knocks. Well, the Citadel offers just that, right? It's an, in, it's an intense, it's a rigorous program, but it affords them the opportunity to lead their peers. So we have these five leadership leadership laboratories that are our five battalions, and, and the Corps of Cadets is given the opportunity for the Corps to run the Corps here. And I firmly believe that if you can lead your peers, right, you can lead anybody. Um, so we have a remarkable academic program here. It's uh, uh, well-recognized throughout the world. So the U.S. News and World Report has ranked it number one in the South for the past 11 years in a row. Um, we got a great academic program, great athletic program, but I think what separates a Citadel from you know your average university is it's that leadership laboratory. The ability to develop men and women of virtue and character and return those leaders back to society. And I think we can all agree that that's what society needs most right now is this principal leaders, men and women of virtue and character that that's kind of been imbued with our core values of uh, honor, duty, and respect. And the young men and women who come down here are just absolutely remarkable. They, they want to challenge themselves. Um, they, they want to, you know, uh, test their metal against what uh, is perceived to be the most rigorous of all those standards. But uh, the analogy I like to use sometimes when uh, I'm describing the, the Citadel effect is uh, is the marshmallow test? Did you ever, do you know what the marshmallow test is? No, I don't think I do. So uh, it, it was a study about forty years ago done at Harvard, and what they did was they grabbed a bunch of four year olds and uh, they gave them a marshmallow and they put them in a room in front of a camera, and the test was pretty simple. If the young man or woman could uh, could go an hour without eating that marshmallow, they give them two. Right. Right. So the test the test was all about delayed gratification. Now, we are certainly in an instant gratification world, are, are we not today? Um, but the, the Citadel is, quite frankly, it's the 18-year-old version of, uh, uh, of the marshmallow test. Because here's what Harvard found, right? Um, you can Google it up and you can watch the, the little tape of the kids staring at the marshmallow for an hour. Are absolutely adorable. You know, they, they hold it, they <laughs> smell it, they look at it in the round, um, and they're conflicted, right? And as you would imagine, the vast majority of four-year-olds eat the marshmallow. Um, but what Harvard did was is they tracked those that had the discipline to have that delayed gratification. And they found, you know, there was a direct correlation between their, you know, that ability, that attribute, and their future success. Certainly, yeah. So, yeah. As I mentioned, that's kind of the sigil. So the, it's not your typical college experience. You know, they have to sacrifice a little bit. They have to submit themselves to a system of discipline in order to reach its trans, reap its transformational benefits. And the sigil's return on investment is, is, uh, blows everybody else away. So um, if you look at yeah. South Carolina, yeah, I the wanna... graduates of the sigil, um, you know, their success rate, you know, how well they do in society, um, though, Right now, only a third, or a little bit more than a third, actually go on to commission. But the rest of the graduates go on to be captains of industry and leaders uh, in the state, the country, and the world. So it's that return on investment. Those that are willing to actually you know, submit themselves to the rigors of the system to reach its transformational benefits. But there's no instant gratification here, I assure you. Well, and, and I want to remind folks that it was founded in 1842. It's got a long, rich history. So this isn't just a... Uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of something that you can't trace those uh, captains of industry to because it's been around forever. Um, tell us about the size of the student body, where they come from, what the, what do they primarily study, those sorts of things. Well, right now, today, I had 2,222 cadets fell out from morning formation. Um, they're organized into uh, 16 majors here, and though the majority of the cadets just were just Below um, 50% of the cadets are actually from um, South Carolina. We are represented by 29 states. Uh, correction, um, 
almost all 50 states and uh, in 29 countries. So we have a very diverse student body. Right now, um, we have about 13% young ladies. Uh, the, the women we have here, are, though, are, they're disproportionately represented in the, in the leadership billets around here. The young ladies that come here, come here with a purpose, and, uh, and they do exceptionally well. Um, and we're continuing to be a, a more diverse core, so about uh, 23% of the core of this latest class are um, from different ethnicities. Um, so and we have a strong international program that we're starting to build right now. We have students from Taiwan, um, from uh, some of the GCC countries, from Latin America. You, you may have slid over this, or maybe I missed it, but uh, is this a private school or a public school? It's a public school. That's right. It's, it's a state what school, yeah. so um, we receive funding from the state of South Carolina, but we rely heavily on um, on federal dollars, uh, specifically from our ROTC programs. We have a strong Army ROTC program, a very small, strong Air Force ROTC program, and, of course, uh, you can be commissioned in the Naval Services. Uh, we commission about 25 uh, Marines a year here. Tell us. Uh, one tell thing us that this, go ahead, uh, sorry, Tom. Go ahead. A new program that we started a few years ago, I think, that has really taken off has been our Intel program and our cyber program. So the NSA actually designated last year the Citadel um, a Center of Excellence, and we are rebuilding and modernizing our facilities. We're going to have a skiff here in a year or so. And uh, we've partnered with different three-letter agencies now so that you can come to the Citadel and you can contract not with uh, a particular service now, but you can partner with uh, a three-letter agency. So they'll pay your tuition with the agreement that you will do um, cyber warfare for, you know, uh, let's say the NSA. Very interesting. Very, and, and shows that the Citadel is moving with the times because that's going to be in the in the world of cyber, in the world of Russia and right. China. This is a really important uh, issue. So I'm glad these leaders are being trained at the Citadel. Tell us a little bit about uh, your new role. You just started this summer as commandant of cadets at the Citadel, and for a graduate of the Citadel and somebody who spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, this has got to be kind of a dream job. Tell me about it. It, it truly is. I don't want to say I, I ever dreamed of being the commandant, but it certainly feels like a dream now that I'm here. Well, if it, they went if they went back and checked your record, they probably would never <laughs> have given you the job. But but you're in now, so tell us about it. it it's funny you mentioned that. So the young uh, the the not that young, excuse me, the woman um, who was the uh, executive assistant for the uh, the commandant here was the name of Miss Redmond, and any Citadel graduate out there will will uh, think far upon the, the uh, hearing that name well miss redmond was the executive assistant from the commandant when i was a kid out here 34 years ago and she's here still today so we have this agreement that's that, tradition uh, miss redmond <laughs> cannot tell any tommy gordon stories um, yeah good, but, good deal <laughs> keep keep supplying her with uh, anything that she wants <laughs> She is a national treasure, and uh, we're so blessed to still have her here. But the commandant's role is is basically I'm responsible for the the discipline, but also training and coaching and advising. Uh, on I had the practical application of our leadership development model here. So I have 29 tactical officers. They uh, they train, advise, and coach. So we have both uh, retired and reservists that uh, work in the barracks right now, and to include a host of uh, remarkable senior enlisted leaders. So I have chief master sergeants in the Air Force, uh, command sergeant majors in the Army, and retired Marine sergeants major also working here to help train, coach, and advise the, the Corps cadets and be able to implement our leadership development program. Well, it's uh, fantastic uh, to learn about the Citadel, um, known about it, haven't talked to anybody on it, so I'm really glad to do that. I actually have a, a, a partner here whose son went down this summer to kind of look at it and see if it was right for him. So when I got you lined up, I said, oh, this is great. <laughs> but uh, we're glad that you were able to take some time today, Colonel Thomas J. Gordon, United States Marine Corps, retired, to talk to us about leadership and talk to us about the Citadel. Hey, Jim, thank you so much for your time and the opportunity. And I want to thank everybody for listening to Veterans Radio today. I am Jim Fossone. It's been a pleasure to be your host. I'm a veterans disability lawyer at Legal Help for Veterans, and you can reach us at 800-693-4800 or legalhelpforveterans.com on the web. You can follow Veterans Radio on Facebook, 
and listen to its podcasts and Internet radio shows by going to veteransradio.net. And until next time, you are dismissed. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. We again want to thank our national sponsors, the National Veterans Business Development Council, NVBDC.org, Eisenhower Center, VA Ann Arbor Health Care System, the Vietnam Veterans of America, Charles S. Kettles Chapter, Ann Arbor, Michigan. VFW Graf O'Hara Post 423 in Ann Arbor. And the American Legion Press Corn Post 46, also in Ann Arbor. They keep us on the air, as does your support. Go to Facebook, go to veteransradio.net, and support our efforts. And until next time, you are dismissed. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.